Whatever happened at D12? You probably heard of the group through Eminem, as most of their biggest songs were made with him. Songs like My Band, How Come, Purple Hills, and many more were on repeat back in the 2000s cause this group had chemistry like no other. But like many other bands, D12 experienced a decline in popularity after 2006. And upon further investigation, the reasons for this decline may be a little confusing. Now, if you ask Eminem or D12 about why they stopped making music together, they'll mostly boil it down to something along the lines of how the death of Proof in 2006 completely disbanded the group, or that they simply went their separate ways to work on their solo careers, but many fans speculate that the real reason is a lot deeper than it seemed. While the death of Proof was a major loss to the group considering the fact he was literally the one who created D12 in the first place, there have been many fans and critics who claim that this is just another one of Eminem's excuses, as he was known to have poor business practices in the past when it came to signing new artists. Some examples include Slaughterhouse, Yellow Wolf, and oh yeah, who could forget? Obi Trice, Trice, real name, no gimmick. Eminem has also had success in signing and promoting other artists as well, such as 50 Cent for example, but believe it or not, they could have quite literally contributed to D12's decline in popularity as well. So what really happened? Well, to start in typical YouTube essay fashion, we gotta go back to the time D12 hadn't even existed yet, when the group members were just rapping around the streets of Detroit. Now, many people don't know that it was Proof who actually founded D12 in 1991 by gathering some of the best local rappers in the city. Proof was known for regularly visiting a hip hop shop where he would introduce local rappers in Detroit to Eminem, similar to the plot in A Mile. D12 officially formed the group we recognize today in 1996 and originally consisted of six members, Proof, Bizarre, Mr. Porter, Caniva, Swifty, and Eminem. There was also another member named Bugs that many fans forgot about, but we're going to talk about his absolutely sad disappearance in just a second. D12 was named after the 12 member jury system in criminal cases, with each member representing a different juror. That's a lot more creative than rappers these days who throw the word Lil in front of a random pronoun or verb, if you ask me. But before signing to Eminem, all of the members of the group were relatively unknown, but they had a small buzz in the local scene. However, after Eminem gained fame, and notoriety in the mainstream, by signing a life-changing record deal with Dr. Dre in 1997, he brought D12 with him and while this was great for everyone involved, this caused some major problems for the group later on due to ego and issues surrounding masculinity. But before we delve deeper into the reasons for D12's decline, it's important to understand the group's first tragedy, the death of member Bugs in 1999. For those who don't know, Bugs was one of the original members of the group before Eminem was ever in it. His real name was Carnell Pitts, and he was killed in a drive-by shooting just months before the release of D12's debut album, Devil's Night, which was a huge blow to the group. Bugs appears on several tracks on Devil's Night, including Good Die Young, which is hella ironic and just sad, but also the song Nothing To Do, and his death was also referenced on the track Bugs 97. He's remembered as a talented and promising young artist, and even Eminem claimed that at the time of his death, Bugs was in his prime and was about to blow up very soon. It was a shame because he really was in his prime, you know, when his life was taken away from him and he was just about to get a major deal that really would have changed his life. Rest in peace. What's sad is that Bugs died essentially over a water gun. According to Rolling Stone, Bugs' friend's cousin was sprayed with a high-powered water gun, which developed into violence, leading Bugs to step in, only to be fired down with gunshots and run over by a car. M's Like Toy Soldier's music video from his encore album also pays homage to Bugs' death, as it features a scene depicting the late rapper, played by Proof in the visuals, being shot and later dying in the hospital. Please keep this in mind, as it will make for an eerie situation later in the video. I was mad, man, because Bugs was getting the best of his boy, man. That's all. Couldn't take it like a man. Came back, shot him in the face, shot him in the neck, like, two or three times and ran over him with a car. However, the death of Bugs was a gift and a curse. While it led to one of the most depressing moments for every member in the group, it was also what caused Eminem to officially join the group in the first place. I basically asked the group, you know, is it cool if I take Bugs' place? Make it like the old days, like we was a group before any- I mean, imagine denying the entrance of someone who was not only really affiliated with the group, but would also promise them much more success and mainstream recognition. It was kind of a no-brainer to bring Eminem in, but 
was this really the right decision? I mean, Eminem joining the group only promised more fame and success to everyone involved, sure. But Eminem had a lot going on at the time. Not only was he working on his own projects, but he was trying to raise his daughter and was pretty much a single dad. All this while touring, signing other artists and building up their careers, doing music videos, keeping up his image. And we later learned down the road that he was struggling with an insane drug addiction while all this was going on. However, at first, things didn't seem too bad. Not too long after, D12 became relatively well-known worldwide. The addition of Eminem skyrocketed them to success overnight. And next thing you know, they took over the rap world by storm. The group dropped the album Devil's Night on June 19th, 2001, and man, it was a timeless project front to back. The album features productions by Dr. Dre, Eminem, and the Bass Brothers. It's known for its controversial and explicit lyrics, as well as the incorporation of horrorcore elements, which helped it receive generally positive reviews from fans and critics. This was surely a different time in hip hop where rappers were still able to get away with saying things like this. You know why my hands are so numb? My grandmother sucked my dick and I didn't come. What did he say? Hey. But yeah, the album was really dope and even had a legendary diss track from Eminem to Limp Bizkit called Girls that's honestly super slept on. For the next three years, the group went on a worldwide tour to promote the album and working on their next project, D12 World, that was set to drop in 2004. Now this is kind of long considering the hype that they had already built. They had so many singles to build off of, like fight music, Purple Hills, and shit on you. But this is what I was referring to when I said Eminem just had a lot going on. In the span of 2001 to 2004, Eminem had released two albums, helped Dr. Dre with The Chronic, and recently signed 50 Cent and Obi Trice. Not to mention the touring, the music videos, award shows, father duties. I mean, sheesh, bro definitely had a lot on his plate. Overall, their second album, D12 World, was still a massive success. The album featured hit singles like My Band and How Come, and debuted at number one on Billboard's 200 chart, selling over 1 million copies in its first week. This is something not even the biggest artist in the world could not even replicate. The group went on to tour and promote the album and play to sold out crowds around the world. In addition to their own music, D12 members also collaborated with other artists and worked on their solo projects. D12 was becoming more famous and successful than ever before, but then something bad happened. Rapper Deshaun Holton, better known as Proof, one of the founders of the rap group D12 and a close friend of sometime D12 member Eminem, was shot and killed at a Detroit nightclub. He was 32 years old. Police say Proof was shot in the head after an altercation at the Triple C Club. He was rushed to St. John Holy Cross Hospital, but was pronounced dead on arrival. The death of Proof had a devastating impact on the group and on Eminem, who wrote about his grief in plenty of his songs. Proof was the glue that binded us all together, right? He did so much shit behind the scenes that I didn't even realize and did things to keep us a group and to motivate us. Proof was an integral member of D12 and a confidant of Eminem. His departure left a gaping hole in the group's dynamic, one they found challenging to reconcile. The loss of Proof was a significant blow to D12 and the group struggled to move forward in the aftermath of his death. They released one more album called Return of the Dozen in 2012 but it failed to capture the same magic as their previous releases. Honestly, even as a huge fan of both the group and Eminem myself, I cannot remember a single track off of these albums. Despite their best efforts, D12 was never able to fully recover from the tragedy and the internal conflicts that had plagued the group for years. And so, after a decade of their success, D12 faded into obscurity, leaving fans to wonder what could have been. I went through a really rough time with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it hit us all, you yeah. know, everyone in the group. I mean, every, there, there was so many people that love Proof. You know what I mean? Just me particularly took it, it was rough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was, especially the, the first year was, it was bad, you know? Miss him to death, man. After Proof's death, D12 went on a hiatus, and the members focused on their own solo career. While some of the members continued to make music, the group as a whole did not release any new material. In 2012, the group announced that they had disbanded, citing creative differences. I mean, guys, I get that it was a sad event and all, but I'm personally sick of hearing that creative differences are what separate crews. I mean, we heard the same thing with 50 Cent when he left Eminem's label. And you know, I'm sure that Kendrick Lamar even left TDE because of creative differences. I just feel like it's a very blanket statement and that there's a lot more to the story that they're not necessarily revealing to us. 
Unlike many other members from the group, Eminem did continue to have a successful career as a solo artist. He released several more albums, including Relapse, Recovery, Kamikaze, and his most recent, Music To Be Martyred By, which have all topped the charts despite receiving mixed reviews from fans and critics alike, but ultimately, Eminem just kept the train going. But let's try to forget whatever the hell he dropped in 2018. I mean, this was just a big what the f moment for Eminem. And although he was still very successful, it's no denying that the death of Proof changed Eminem's entire style and really took a dramatic shift. But nonetheless, in 2018, Eminem would finally address what the hell happened to D12 after he released the song Stepping Stone. In the song, he raps about the difficulties of moving on and maintaining friendships in the wake of tragedy. While Joe Budden was over here screaming at the top of his lungs and begging Eminem for answers about the unfortunate breakup with Slaughterhouse, Eminem was open about his role in the demise of D12. Now many fans have always thought that Eminem was pretty distant from D12, and people just sort of assumed that the group was done for a very long time. So it was kind of a curveball for Eminem to just say this out of nowhere. Sadly, this didn't really give fans too much of a perspective, and many claim that the song was really a half-assed effort to explain the reason they split up. I mean, throughout the song you say that you didn't mean to use D12 as a stepping stone, but all signs point to yes. But Eminem gave more insight on an interview with Sway where he claims that Proof was the one who kept the group together. However, some fans on Reddit introduced a pretty interesting observation that I think is worth pointing out. I get that they're Eminem's crew, but there's nothing special about M. Let's be honest, the majority of us only listen to the track that features M anyways. Another thing, imagine being D12, you're Eminem's crew, then Royce comes along, who is better than you, then 50 comes along, who is also better than you, then Slaughterhouse. It's like D12 is the old ugly wife and Eminem just keeps running around with his new mistresses. Now, I don't 100% agree with this, but hey man, it does kind of make sense. Eminem started rolling with different people and maybe it was the connection, the vibe, and the success he got from his collaborations with other artists that sort of steered him away. But comment your thoughts on D12 and if you would like them to make a comeback and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.